Hello and welcome to another demonstration. Today I'm going to be showing a little bit about the Ansible collection for ServiceNow ITSM. Uh, it has a lot of different features. So if we talk, pop over to the documentation tab, I can see it's got um, uh, change requests. So I can pull information, I can update, I can do configuration items, which is what I'm going to be doing in this demonstration for CMDB, but I can also work with incidents and problems. So in this specific incident, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take some files. So say, for example, I have a monitoring system and I've exported all of the configuration, right? All of those devices. And I'll take a look at it here. This is my um, pretend template file, right? So this is going to be my export from my monitoring system in this instance. And it's got all of my devices in here. So I've got switch one, switch two, switch three, switch four. I've got their configuration information, IP, uh, serial numbers and stuff like that. And I'm going to import them into the ServiceNow CMDB, in uh, particular the uh, switch one under the hardware section. So I'm gonna pop into my ServiceNow instance and it's the CI class manager. If you click into there, click on hierarchy, then we're going to go hardware, expand hardware, and then we're going to be looking for network gear. And then I'm going to find the switch section, click on here. It's going to actually show me the table name in question, right? So CMDB, CIIP switch, that's the one I'm going to be updating. If I click on CI list right over here, it shows me all of my entries in there. So I've got three switches. Uh, one of them's got a serial number of one. These two are already in the configured state, but my configuration file here actually has a fourth switch. And then I'm going to be updating the serial number on number one. So in my, uh, Ansible tower environment, I'm actually using a custom credential and I'm passing over the required information, uh, to log into my instance as environment variables. And I'm going to already kind of demonstrated that in another one. So uh, I will link to that to save myself some time because I'm efficient, not lazy, but efficient. Here is my collection service. Now collection configuration items import. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. And while it runs, I'll pop back over here and I'll show you exactly what it's doing. It's running two playbooks. This is the main playbook import and import sub. So import is going to go through. Very first thing it does is I set up some variables in here. So that's the CMDB I want to connect to. I'm setting everything as production and in the hardware category. So very first task goes and imports my file. Next task actually queries that CMDB and it pulls all the items into a variable. The last task in this main playbook is I loop through all of my new devices in this configuration file. I loop through them one at a time and I call a subtask. That subtask is right here. And that subtask, what it does is for say switch one, which is the very first entry, it's going to loop through all of the existing CMDB items and see if it already exists. Now I'm matching on name, right? If the names exist uh, identically, then I know I've got a match. So in my environments, I always have very unique names. They're coded based on location, uh, where they are within the building and then their function. So very, um, very specific names. And that's important because if I find an entry, I want to update it. It's going to loop through looking for entries. If it finds it, it'll make an update. If it does, it'll set a flag in this variable. And then in this next entry, it'll say, Hey, did that item already exist? If it did, don't do anything. Well, that's going to be the case on the first three switches, switch one, two, and three, but the fourth one actually won't have a match and it'll go ahead and create it at the end. So why is that important? Why do I have to go through all these steps? Because this module is not item potent um, in that uh, it keys off of a field called uh, system ID inside of the CMDB and not based on any other entry. So I'm not going to know that system ID pulling it from, you know, my monitoring system. I'm not going to know what the system ID happens to be in um, uh, my service now instance. So I've got to key it on something that's meaningful to me and I'm doing it based on name. So if I was to just rerun this um, without this particular entry uh, up here without this task and I just told it, hey, create, it will actually create 
um, as many entries of the exact same information over and over and over. So if I ran this 10 times, I would have switch one in there 10 times, which is absolutely not what we want to do. So I'm going to pop back over to my tower environment and it actually completes really fast. If I take a look at my very first entry, I see if task one exists, update its configuration. So we see change. And again, since it's not item potent, even if the information is identical, it'll show change. So you, you recall switch two and switch three are already in their existing correct state. Uh, as it loops through there, it found switch two's information. So it goes ahead and makes an update. So even though they were identical, it's going to make a change. So if that entry exists in there, you're always going to see a change switch three existed you'll see the change there switch four however did not exist and so switch four didn't exist so it created it so i should be able to come back into service now refresh this page and i see my switch four now exists and then switch one has its serial number updated so again i could rerun this uh, play again and none of this information will change right it will uh, in the cmdb it will stay identical even though it's you know, it'll show changed in the uh, the playbook. So I could, theoretically, I could run this on a regular interval. So it will export CMDB information, say, from my monitoring system. So a lot of monitoring systems have auto discovery. So they're constantly out there looking for new devices. It'll find them and it'll add them into their database. Well, I could have this run at regular intervals so that any new device that gets, you know, discovered, I can pull that information and I can have it push it to my CMDB. So that could be a good connector for it there. Or if I'm just doing one initial import, I could do it in that fashion as well. So if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, let me know. And uh, thanks and happy automating.